As the popular saying goes, money does not grow on trees, but wealth can grow through careful money management. While getting on top of your finances may seem like an insurmountable task for some, taking control and being consistent will help you turn a time-consuming chore into a habit you actually enjoy. From tracking your expenses to following a simple budget and cutting down on unnecessary spending, there are a number of ways to help you stay on top of your financial affairs. But while the COVID-19 crisis saw some people's spending decrease dramatically last year, others suffered job losses, which threw their personal finances into chaos. So how can people get their finances back on track in this post-COVID era? And how can it be done in a simple way? Welcome to Pocketful of Dirhams. I'm Alice Hayne, and joining me today is Lexi Swade, the co-founder of Loon, a new personal finance assistance platform to simplify money management and increase financial literacy in the MENA region. Before I start, please subscribe to Pocketful of Dirhams to receive the latest episodes. Welcome to the show, Alexi. Thank you so much for having me, Alice. Now, personal finance really came to the fore during the COVID-19 crisis because it divided populations. Well, some who retained their jobs managed to save more money. Others had to face up to the fact they simply didn't have the financial buffers in place to protect them when job loss occurred. So what did you notice about the way COVID-19 affected people's finances? So I think one of the key takeaways we noticed at Loon with COVID-19, and this is personal to both myself and my co-founder, Hilal, was the fact that people really started to realize what they need in life uh, rather than what they just want. So during the quarantine period, and especially during those uh, times when people did really need to kind of, you know, reassess their financial position, either due to job loss or sort of, you know, having to scale down their expenditure, they realized the things that they have just got into the habit of spending on as well as the things that they really need to, you know, focus on. So things like groceries instead of going out, so on and so forth. And do you think that some generations are actually better than others at managing their money? Is that something that you noticed? So I wouldn't necessarily say it's generations. I think it's more of life experience, if I'm being perfectly honest, because there are certain, you know, points in your life where you do sort of sit down and think, okay, I really need to be better at uh, taking care of my finances. For example, uh, a lot of my friends have become a lot more responsible once they got married or once they started uh, their own families because they realized suddenly, you know, they couldn't go out as often as they wanted to or they have these new expenses that they never had before. Um, so I would really say rather than it being a generational thing, and I'm sure my parents disagree with me on this, but anyway, um, I think it's more so something that people really kind of notice when the time comes. So really what you're saying is that we all need some kind of help. Yeah, I definitely think sort of discussing money management isn't commonplace in most people's homes, let alone their lives in general. It's really kind of seen as a taboo subject. Um, and one of the things, you know, we realized with creating Loon and sort of going through this process was the fact that people didn't have a reference point. They didn't there are a lot of resources available, but there's no sort of one centralized location to help handhold and, you know, give people simple advice. You mentioned Loon there. That's your company that you've just founded. And I understand that when you were thinking about this concept, you and your co-founder, Halal, you, you were at the beginning of your career. Is that right? And you were sort of struggling to get on top of your own finances. Yeah, exactly. So what really kind of flagged Loon in our minds was the fact that, you know, both of us kind of graduated university. We both got jobs. Hilal was a lawyer. I was a consultant. And I think we made the mistake that a lot of sort of young people make, which is as soon as they get their first job, they just spend their entire salary. And although that's, you know, fine for the first couple of months, it gets quite serious after you know, you repeatedly do it. And then you get to the point where I'd say the glitz and glamour wear, wears off a little bit. And you realize, you know what, I want to make this big purchase, but I don't have any money to do it. So how am I going to afford it? 
And what was the trigger point? What made you kind of think, I need to approach this in a different way? I think mine was the fact that, you know, I'd been working for a couple of uh, years at that point, actually, and same with Hilal. And we'd got to the point where we really wanted to start to spread our wings. Um, so I wanted to move to a different apartment so I could be on my own. Hilal, at the same time, was looking to get married. And we realized that, you know, the way where we got to so far had been, we obviously had some savings in our account, but it wasn't nearly enough to make it sustainable for us to continue. So we really decided, you know what, although we have some money, let's see if there's a way to kind of maximize it. I have to say, I, I mean, I can remember from my early 20s, I used to constantly, you know, say to my parents, oh, I'm broke, I'm broke. Not that I was asking them for money. I just was telling them that fact. And my father used to hammer home the fact it, you've actually got enough money to pay for everything. It's just how you're allocating that money. And it was something I had to learn to get on top of on my own. Is this something, you know, you've talked about you and Hilal, but was it something you were also noticing among friends as well? Yes, exactly. And um, when Hilal and I decided, you know, we want to start saving more money, uh, we did what I think a lot of people do and started asking our friends, you know, well, how do you do it? Um, and the responses we got, some people used Excel, other people were taking notes on their phone. Um, and the third kind of group were the people that I think are really mad. They were going through their statements, which is a healthy habit to have, but at the same time, it takes two to three you know, hours in some cases to go through and line item by line item, tick everything off. So when we were kind of speaking to different people and sort of trying to get feedback, we realized that the problem wasn't just us, but it was actually kind of endemic to our friends and our wider friend circles. So how does Loon solve that problem? How does it help people, you know, all the different strategies that we may have, how does it help people kind of get around that? So sort of at the core of Loon, we wanted something that was simple and that could be an easy basis for people to really start to, you know, understand how to start saving their money. So what we did when creating the application was we realized, okay, first and foremost, we need a way to automate people's automatically sort of import that data so people know how they're spending their money. And so essentially what we did was we looked at different providers. We ended up choosing one whereby you can link your bank account to the application. When you link your bank account to the application, you're able to import your transactions. We then categorize those transactions and we give you basically a summary of you know, the money coming in, the money going out, and really the main categories that you're spending on. I mean, a lot of banks do that already. What does your service do that's different? What we saw with a lot of banks was, although a lot of them do it, it's not really as accurate as one would like. And on top of which, what we've seen is that most people or most banks, obviously, um, only provide it for their one bank account. Whereas you know, I personally have a credit card from one bank and a current and savings account at another bank. So it's quite complicated for me to track the expenditure and sort of income across the two. Whereas with this, uh, with the model that we chose, we can have it all in one centralized location. And on top of which, what we've tried to do with Loon is offer further insights than we've seen with any other banking app. So we give sort of an overview of not just the categories, but also the cash flow and then we furthermore help people set budgets. So for example, let's say I buy a lot of coffee and I'm going to certain, will it break it down as detailed as that and tell me, look, Alice, you've spent X number of dirhams in Starbucks and, and this much over there. I mean, how does it break it down? So at the current level, we have it. Sadly, it's not as detailed as you're spending this much at this vendor. Um, what we have it as is across 12 different categories. So the categories are things like entertainment, uh, restaurants and dining, um, groceries, home, et cetera. Those are just kind of 12 of the major ones off the top of my head. What we're looking to do in the future is sort of further break that down. Ultimately, our vision for Loon, and we're hoping to realize that in the coming months, is say, hi, Alice, uh, actually, you know what? Your top vendors are Starbucks, um, Carrefour, Spinney's, et cetera. And on top of which, you're spending the majority of your money on coffee and then at petrol stations, so on and so forth. So 
So it really will break it down to the sort of nitty gritty. So you can see perhaps those red flag spending moments where you might be buying too much of one product or spending too much money on something that you don't really need. Exactly. And that's kind of one of the things that we really want to help flag to users, because I think people have these, you know, habits of spending money. And one thing I became quite conscious of um, before Loon was coffee, for example. Coffee is just one of those things that you think, oh, well, it's just a coffee. And you go and, you know, get one two or three times a day. And when you realize how much you're spending on coffee, then you start to really understand, you know what, this is something I'm just constantly just overpaying on and I could easily cut it down. So how much were you spending on coffee? (laughs) Far too much. (laughs) And and from there, I mean, if people sign up to the app, is there a fee involved? I mean, how do you make your money on the back of this? So as of now, we are completely free. Um, We're looking at possibly adding in premium features in the future in order to sort of, you know, give people more detailed insights and Um, give them more guidance, which would be a paid feature. But as of now, the application is completely free. And so how do you monetize it from a company point of view? So the way we're looking to monetize is one through sponsorships, two through sort of adding to the application and having those premium features. And a third way is kind of looking at business partnerships we can make. So for example, uh, one way could be through making agreements with retailers in order for them to provide the solution to their end users. So they could perhaps offer discounts or or that kind of thing for people who are particularly going to that vendor a lot. Exactly. And what we would see there is basically, and this is something that, you know, we've held quite close to, uh, to our cause with Loon because we're not trying to, you know, push things to people who don't want certain Um, certain products what we're really looking to do is help people save so it makes sense for me to help somebody save and at the same time to help a retailer connect with their customer on a deeper level so how does this then help people budget I mean they're going to see what they're spending on but how do they then take that information and decide how to budget their money I think one of the first things people need to kind of understand is how they're spending in order for them to budget. So for example, I have friends who are, you know, really interested in budgeting, but when they actually look at how much they're spending, it's more than they even make. So it's not necessarily helpful for an application to come along and say, okay, you're spending, for example, 12,000 dirhams a month when you only make 8,000 dirhams a month. So here's a budget for 6,000. What we're really trying to do is kind of help people you know, maybe start at that 12, but then work their way down on a month on month basis. And I think it's really important to have that sort of initial realization, oh, wow, I am actually spending more than I make. And what am I spending that money on? And therefore, can I cut it down? And so does the app actually give them tools to create that budget? Or does it help them set that budget? How does the the two come together? Uh, When sort of signing up for the app, what we ask the users to do is go through uh, a budget flow whereby we basically, you know, help someone take their income and then allocate it accordingly to different um, sort of categories that are important to them. And then we recommend using saving rules, how much they should be and, you know, financial advice on how much they should be spending for each of those categories. And it's just based on best practices uh, for now. So it's guidelines. And then, you know, maybe further down the line, would it be a case that they could actually input how much they're spending or or would the app just reflect that drop in expenditure as as they go on? Exactly. The app will automatically reflect that as they go on. So it just helps them kind of almost like you're on a diet, but you're on a financial diet and you can sort of track it as you go along. Yeah, exactly. Um, Honestly, one of the main realizations I've had throughout this whole process is how similar dieting and exercise and financial health are. Yeah, I mean, they they, they kind of go hand in hand. I mean, why is tracking your expenditure and budgeting so important? You know, you've now made that switch. Have you noticed how much better your finances are now, now that you kind of track them more carefully? Definitely. What we're trying to do with Loon is help people take those couple of steps whereby they can see as they move along what you know, where they are in there in that month. 
and how they're doing compared to their budget. So we try and address the problem before it becomes a problem. And really the whole concept behind that is if you can stop it early, then you're avoiding an inevitable thing later down the road. So one thing Hilal and I both faced, for example, was financial stress. We would think a lot about money and similar to what you were saying about with your dad, where you, you'd say, I'm broke, I'm broke. It's not really that you are broke, but you feel that way. So it's really giving users the clarity, the transparency, the insight in order for them to understand that and avoid that financial stress. I absolutely agree. I have to say when I finally did get on top of my finances, which wasn't probably until my late 20s, by just being really clear about how much I had to spend every month and then making sure that the rest went into savings and investment. It just takes away that worry because you know you're then building up something on the side to protect you in the future. At the same time, you're not spending more than your income and you don't have that sense of being absolutely broke all the time. But I mean, it's not just about, you know, looking at expenditure and budgeting. You've kind of got a bigger mission as well. You're looking to boost financial literacy across the MENA region. I mean, how do you plan to do that? And why is it so important? You know, looking at the region in general, I think talking about money is incredibly taboo. And there is this idea of, you know, keeping up appearances in a certain way um, that people are now starting to move away from, and I think COVID was a big shift in this, but it's still there. So what we're trying to do is break that taboo um, through you know, a simple platform such as Loon, and on top of which, the approach we're taking is really to create Loon as a personal financial assistant rather than just you know, a budgeting app. And the reason I, I make that difference is because budgeting apps are, are already there financial literacy and financial information are already there on the internet. So when we loon as a personal financial assistant, we're really trying to put out something that you can rely on that does give you information. And it's not just kind of a page in the app, but rather is based on how you're spending and giving you insights and teaching you things along the way. So for example, with setting the budgeting rules, we make it quite clear that we are using the 80-20 rule which means that of your income, you should save at least 20% and spend the remaining 80. Now, that's a basic financial rule that I hope somebody would learn, whether they're on Loon or not. So if somebody uses Loon, kind of notices that, and then ultimately decides, you know what, I feel like um, I'd no longer need to use Loon, which is completely understandable. At least we're hoping that they would be able to take away that piece of information. And... As they kind of go forward, what's your what's your plan long term? I mean, where are you trying to take these people? So ultimately, what we're trying to do with Loon is create one holistic platform for them to have a complete understanding of their saving, uh, expenditure and investment. So it's as you mentioned, you know, having a clear understanding of where your money's going and then being able to take a chunk of it and putting it in, put it into saving and investment. The way we kind of see it is that it's an evolution where people first start with managing their money so they know where it's going. They then are able to start saving some of that money and putting it towards specific goals. And ultimately, they're able to invest that money and put it into, you know, whatever investment products that they want in order to grow their wealth without them having to constantly, you know, focus on it and work on it. What about the younger generations? I mean, I'm talking about people at school or people coming up to leaving school or perhaps leaving higher education. I mean, that's the generation that sometimes I always feel is a bit lost. I remember going to university and and not knowing what an overdraft was. It, it's just, you, you sort of, you have to really get to grips with these things very quickly. What's missing in the education process to help career starters get a grip on their finances? I think it's honestly a combination of two things. I think it stems from one, that aspect of you know, it's a little bit of a taboo to talk about money. But the second aspect is the fact that people really, I think, avoid finance in general. And I think it's because finance does involve a lot of jargon, a lot of words that sound very complicated and not necessarily, you know, intuitive. I mean, you mentioned the word overdraft. That doesn't tell you exactly what it is. Yes, it has some kind of relation, but you really need to learn that. And I think it's the idea of having to learn that that puts people off. What I think would be beneficial in the long run is through creating, you know, digestible 
easy, non-intimidating, open forums and uh, materials for people to, you know, learn more from, such as with, you know, this podcast. I think it does a great deal in helping people have that kind of, you know, easy to access source that gives them insight into what these specific financial terms are and what they really mean. So what advice would you give to people who are perhaps listening in now and if they're struggling with debts or don't know how to get on top, you know, get that first rung on the ladder towards managing their finances, what would you tell them to do now? I think the first sort of step, and again, going back to our sort of exercise analogy, is to really acknowledge that it's something you want to change. And by taking that first sort of step in acknowledging it, then you'll be able to say, okay, now I need to make a plan. And you can start looking at, you know, what are the resources? Where can you go? Where can you get that insight? And then kind of make a plan from there and how you're going to address it. So for you, you know, you've now created Loon, you've learned from Loon. Have you got on top of your finances? I mean, did you move into that flat that you were looking at? Uh, I did, actually. Well, I'm going to very soon. Um, Thankfully, because of kind of all the things we've learned so far and all of the time we've spent, we've been able to pick up a few tips here and there and kind of get on top of our own finances and move forward. So aside from downloading Loon, what three tips would you offer to people now who want to start a saving strategy, who want to get on top of this? The three tips that I would recommend is firstly, get an understanding of how you're spending your money. So what exactly are the areas that you are really spending the most money on and get an understanding of whether you really need to be spending that money. Um, So for example, it could be do you really need to have those three coffees a day from Starbucks? Or do you really need to be eating out as many times a week? Or could you actually just eat at home and, you know, have a a couple of cups of coffee at home before going to the office? That's the kind of first step, I'd say. The next step is really understanding your cash flow. So what's the money coming in and what's the money going out? And I think, you know, in somewhere like Dubai, where we do have quite a large freelance population, that's not always as simple Um, as people getting, you know, one paycheck every month, they know where it's going. So it's really understanding, okay, when when is it coming in? How How is it coming in? And when can you kind of optimize that process? And then the last tip is, once you have those two things under control, it's very easy to then go and set a budget and understand, okay, listen, this is the main budget I want to go and create. And then You know, you can allocate what you believe you should be spending on each of those categories. And as long as you stay in the major budget, then you should be fine. And then ultimately, you may want to optimize that and you can go ahead and do that accordingly. Thank you this week to Alexi Swade. If you would like advice on your personal finance issues, you can write to me on pf at thenational.ae. And remember that PF stands for personal finance. Please do subscribe to the podcast in your podcasting app to receive weekly updates and also leave us a review so we know what you think. This episode was produced by Arthur Edison. I've been your host, Alice Hayne.